Hi, this is David from Ash IT. Now we've been using our X17 for a month now, so I wanted to take this time to do a performance deep dive with our experience using the machine. Well to start with, I've enjoyed the machine so much that I've actually bought myself a 3080 model. Now from the review, the two biggest flaws with the machine were, number one, the base panel did not receive a MUX switch. Now Dell have fixed that issue by releasing the MUX switch as part of a BIOS update for this machine for the 165 Hz panel, but unfortunately the 4K machines did not get this fix. And number two, the high density RAM issue. But this has been an issue with supply and most manufacturers are using this same high density RAM. As long as you don't buy the laptop with a default 16 gigabyte kit, you'll be fine. Now before we move into the performance section, I just want to answer a few questions that we get asked regarding this laptop. Firstly, the lighting that we use on the laptop during our review is called Rainbow Wave. A lot of people have said that they cannot select this for the Tron ring. And what you need to do is to go to the FX section and choose all zones. And once you've chosen all the zones, you'll see the Rainbow Wave as a selectable option. And then that will then apply to the back of the laptop and the touchpad if you've got the 3080 model. You can also do this if you select all the keys of the keyboard and have the Rainbow Wave on the keyboard as well. With regards to the RGB touchpad, we mentioned in our review that it turns itself off after 15 seconds. A couple of people pointed out there should be a way to fix this. Now, if you go into BIOS, you'll see an option in there that allows you to turn the RGB touchpad to always on, and that fixes that issue. And whilst we're in Command Center, I wanted to quickly talk about the profiles. This new X series range has multiple profiles to choose from, but the selection of these profiles doesn't have such a profound impact on the performance of the machine, unlike it did with the previous M17R4 range. I have tested all the profiles, and there's very little difference between them, just the fan noise and the temps are affected. Obviously, for the best temps, you just select the full fan speed, but this does make it quite loud. Now, the quiet profile or the battery profile does offer a quieter system, but what it will do is throttle the system a little bit earlier to keep that noise in check. Now, the system is still perfectly usable, but you'll find it's a few percent lower than it would be in the balanced or the full performance mode. Now, I personally just leave this laptop in either balanced or performance mode, as this offers the best mix of fan speed and has no throttling on the system. The Command Center offers some very basic overclocked profiles, but the overclocks that they give you are so minimal, I think you're better overclocking the system outside a Command Center. Now, the cooling solution has been great. It allows me to run the CPU at over 100 watts to give me the full 4.2 gigahertz across all eight cores of this 11,800H CPU. When gaming, I'm also able to reach the full clock speed throughout long gaming sessions. So with this in mind, do we need to tinker with this machine? No, not really. But what is the point in owning a high-end gaming laptop if you're not gonna try and get the best out of it? So in order to tweak the CPU, you can either use Intel XTU or Throttle Stop. Personally, I love Throttle Stop as it gives you great control of the CPU, and that is what we're gonna to use today. I'll put a link in the description down below in case you wish to actually download this and use it for yourself. Now Dell have actually done us a solid here and allowed us to both undervolt and increase the clock speed on the 11800H CPU. Yes, you heard me correctly. We can actually increase the clock speed of this locked processor. This makes me wonder if there's any point paying extra for the i9 version, because when you increase the clocks on this 11800H CPU, I actually reach the thermal limits of this machine. So in Throttle Stop, we're gonna open the FIVR tab. In here, I'm gonna both increase the clock speeds and I'm gonna undervolt. So firstly, let's raise our turbo boost limits. I'm gonna max out this CPU. And next, we're gonna undervolt. Now, of the three chips I've received on this X series, I've managed between minus 50 and minus 100 millivolts undervolt. But with CPU silicon, your luck will vary. The chip I'm using now isn't the greatest and I can get a maximum of about minus 60 millivolt undervolt. So now I've made my changes, I'm gonna test the CPU for stability. If you're new to Throttle Stop, I'm gonna link the video I've made purely on Throttle Stop with the M17R4, which goes into much more depth into how to use this piece of software. So once we've applied all this, we're gonna run this again and we're gonna compare it to our original scores. So the first benchmark we looked at was Cinebench R20. Now the stock score we got was 5,128, which is a really good score for this 11,800H CPU. But by overclocking it, we managed to get a score of 5,553, which is an absolutely incredible score for an 11,800H CPU. We also ran the Cinebench R23, because obviously that puts a, a lot longer stress on the CPU to see how it would fare. The stock score was 13,140, and when we overclocked it, we got 14,168. So again, you can see that overclock has made quite a difference. Running Geekbench 5 on the CPU, the single core wasn't a massive difference. It went from 1535 to 1570, and the multi-core went from 9172 to 9845. So this is some solid improvements from the CPU with just a few clicks of a button. Well worth doing. So we've overclocked the CPU, so we're gonna push a little bit more from the GPU as well. I've already switched this machine in BIOS to the discrete graphics, which gives us great performance from this 3080. 
but I'm going to squeeze a little bit more out of it with MSI Afterburner. Now again, I've done a video on MSI Afterburner, which I've linked in the description below, which goes into a lot more depth if you're new to overclocking. But I'm going to use a very conservative overclock of 125 on the core and 250 on the memory for these tests. So I've rerun our usual benchmarks from the review. And again, this is, these aren't massive differences, but this is free performance that's on the table. So fire strike, we've gone from 31,558 to 32,454. So not a massive improvement, but again, it's still solid. Time spy went from 12,657 to 13,216. So that's some great scores from a 3080. And Valley's gone from 6,133 to 6,532. And in a couple of the games benchmarks we normally test, Shadow of the Tomb Raider went from 144 to 150, and Total War Warhammer went from 141 to 148.5. So just by a few tweaks on these machines, we've got some really solid improvements. And the good thing about this laptop, and the thing I've absolutely loved about it, is the cooling system with these four fans. Not only does it manage to obviously push through this with the overclock, but also it does it, and the keyboard is still really cool to the touch. Now I've put in an awful lot of hours into gaming in this laptop over the last month, and it's just been an absolute incredible experience. There's so many gaming laptops, the keyboard or the palm rest will heat up and I find it really uncomfortable. The fan noise is imbalanced. It's not too bad either, about 50 decibels. For a gaming laptop that's pushing this amount of performance, really not bad at all. And as I say, the best thing is not having a hot keyboard. Really impressive. So hopefully this has been useful to you. Drop your questions in the comment section down below and I'll definitely get back to you. And also we will do another video shortly where we're gonna look at the actual power delivery of this laptop. So we'll be testing power banks, power supplies, and external monitors to see how well this laptop copes with that. And lastly, thank you for watching.